Hi, in this video I'm going to show you the basics of using GIMP. I'm going to show you the main tools and I'm going to show you some applications of those tools. I'm also going to help you set up the program a little bit so it's a little bit more how most programs run. To start with, you've probably played around with buttons and moved your toolbars and windows around so your version probably looks a lot different to mine. To make it back to how it was, go to Edit, Preferences, go to Window Management, click on Reset, the save positions and okay it and okay it. Now all you need to do is get out of GIMP and then back into it. And all your toolbars and so forth will be as they were. The next thing I would do is I would change to single window mode. It makes all of the little interfaces and toolbars and dockable things all in one window, which I think is a little bit more user friendly, a little bit more how most programs uh, work. I'm just loading some pro, um, images now, so I've got something to work with. And the last thing I'll do to set it up is change your scroll wheel to zoom, so that I find this a much easier way of navigating. And I don't know why it's not default. To do that, it's edit, preferences, uh, input controllers, double click on wheel mouse, find scroll up, Your, yours will be blank, mine's I've changed to view zoom in, double click on it, click find zoom in under view, under view find zoom in and then same with scroll down, change that to zoom out and then your wheel mouse will behave like this. Alright, firstly I'll show you the selection tools, I'm going to go to this image here. Uh, these first two rows, and this one as well in fact, um, these two as well are all selection tools. All your tools have um, options. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see what they all say. Uh, the options are different for each um, controller. Even the ones that are the same, they will be um, have different settings. So you have to be aware of that. So the first one is the rectangle selection tool. It selects ranked rectangles. You notice that if it gets the old one, I can move it around if I want to. Resize it. Uh, that's one way of selecting things. Notice I've got different modes I can add to selection. So what that does is it adds, so you can see the selection is getting bigger. I can't add from here because I don't think I'm moving it. So to add from here, I'll just click off it and then add. Next one is the subtract from section from selection. So that will take away. See so how the selection is getting smaller. And the next one is intersect. I can't remember if I've ever used this one in terms of practical use, but it, you can see it grabbed the intersection of the two. Uh, the next tool is the elliptical tool, the elliptical selection tool. This one just uh, selects circles. So I'm going to click this on add, which doesn't sound particularly useful, um, but whenever you've got curved surfaces, this is actually quite a good tool for selecting those. So, for example, this tomato is has curved surfaces so I can quite quickly use this tool um, to fairly accurately considering how quickly I did that um, select the edges then. The next tool notice how the settings are changing as well is the lasso tool this you can draw your selection so I double click to finish it I, I again it forgets the old one because I'm on the replace current selection mode. If I click as I'm doing it, it'll draw straight lines. So that's probably the most useful uh, use of this tool. So if you are um, got something that is, has straight lines on it, so something artificial, this is a useful tool for grabbing that. The next tool uh, collects, selects color ranges. So the fuzzy selection tool. I'll just get rid of that selection. Put on add. If I click, keep clicking, it'll start grabbing all the red in the section. You notice it won't grab this red, it has to be red that's touching each other from where I've clicked it. The next tool does the same thing, except it doesn't care if they're touching each other or not. So if I click here, it's going to select red from here as well. The next one is the equivalent of the magic wand, uh, magic, um, yeah, magic what is it? Magic scissors in um, Photoshop. Click on that. And then Magic Path, I think it's called. Uh, and then this follows lines like areas of high contrast. 
it's a little bit better than the one in Photoshop because I can add and move these selection tools. It's one of the few tools I think is better in GIMP than in Photoshop. Um, and it will select things quite well. Basically it wants areas where there's high contrast. So if this was a more complicated background, this wouldn't work as well. When I finish it, it'll do the double link to line it up and to actually make the selection go within the selection and see how the icon has changed. Like that's saying no and then that's uh, saying a little circle thing. Click on that and it will select it for you. Um, so they're your selection tools. I won't go through these two because they're a little, this one doesn't work very well and this one's a little bit complicated for, for what we're doing today. The next tool I'll quickly show you is the cropped crop tool. This is for uh, cutting a smaller section out of the image. Personally I would mostly use it because I'm a photographer. I use it as a fixed aspect ratio so that means the um, height to width will stay the same and I might use it. 3.2 is standard for SLRs and I can select the area that I'm going to crop. If I want it in portrait, I can select it to portrait and just double click to finalize the crop that I'm going to make. All right, you also have layers in Photoshop. You can do various things with layers. So here's another image. I'm going to create, these are my layers here. At the moment I've just got the one. I'm going to create a new layer. Layers are like drawing on layers of um, cellophane. So if you look at it from the top, it looks like it's one image, but it's actually multiple images. So now I've got one blank layer of cellophane with nothing on it, and then one with the picture of the car. I can do things like, I'm going to draw some zaggedy lines on this car. I'm going to flood that. This is for filling in sections. And there we go. A bright yellow. There we go. So I, the difference between just painting on top of that car is that I haven't actually damaged it. So that car is still there. It just has this jackety thing on top of it. I can also change the way those layers interact. So where it says normal, I could change that to a color layer, which means it will color the, like the the light and shade will be there. So you can see the detail of the car that's been colored to that yellow. Or I could change that to a hue layer, which means it'll push where there is color to that new color. So because this is a shade, not a color, it's gray. It hasn't changed that, or it actually has just a little bit if you went right up to the edge. Um, but where there is a bright color, like in the car or in the um, brake pads, uh, it will change it. Another use of layers would be um, to lighten an image in parts of it and without lightening in other parts. So this image is backlit, for example, so the, the light source is behind the subjects, which so their faces are dark. To fix that, I can duplicate that layer, right click, duplicate layer. I can change that layer to a screen layer. See, so it's made it a lot lighter. I can then add what's known as a layer mask. So I'm going to right click. I'll just make this a bit smaller so you can see what I'm selecting. Right click, add layer mask. Layer mask is like putting a bit of cardboard over the top of it so you can, with parts of it cut out, so you can see parts of the image but not all of it. So I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm going to have it uh, black, which means it's all um, that you can't see the, the image anymore. So I'm going to click on black and add. So it's still there, but at the moment I can't see this layer. So to make it visible, I'm going to click on the layer mask, which is this one here. I'm going to paint using the airbrush tool. Uh, it, we've got a few different drawing tools within um, GIMP. You've got the pencil tool the paintbrush tool and the airbrush tool. They're all basically the same thing. Um, the airbrush tool is basically a more complicated one that gives you more options. I like it because it has a flow rate, so I've set this to a low flow rate. Um, it gives me more options on what I'm going to do. Uh, I've got the size of it, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So I've got a low flow rate, I've got it on white, I've, I'm on the uh, layer mask, and now I can paint back that the 
area that I want lighter. So basically I can selectively make this image lighter by painting on the sections. If I get it wrong, do a bit that I don't want to, I can just switch to black and paint it back, which is a good thing of lay mask. I'm not actually damaging anything, I'm just um, playing around with things. So now you can see I've lightened their faces without, I have lightened a little bit in the back, which I did before, um, without actually damaging the image at all. Alright, the next thing I'm going to show you how to do uh, is a little bit specific, is the um, perspective tool. So if I click on this tool, this fixes um, perspective. So in this uh, image, the building looks like it's getting smaller as you get to the top. Obviously, it's not really doing that, it's just because it's higher. I can fix that using this tool, just extend the sides. But the fact that it's wobbly at the end, don't worry about that, it's not really wobbly. It'll, it'll fix it when it actually creates it. So basically what I'm after is trying to get the edges on the side to be straight and then transform. And then I messed it up a little bit. I get another go. A little bit more. And then transform. Yeah, you get the idea. I haven't done a great job of that, but you get the idea of it. Last thing I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to create a sort of terminator do it. So I'm going to show you how to copy something from one image to another and manipulate it a little bit. So I'm going to use the um, scissor selection. I'm going to roughly grab this terminator. Don't need to be perfect about it. I'm going to copy him, go to the new image and then paste as new layer. So now I've got this layer above with the terminator dude. He's a lot smaller than this image. I am going to scale him, which is this one here. I'm going to make sure this is locked to stop him from getting fatter and thinner. And then I'm going to scale him. Just move that off. I have to get it roughly the same size as her. The scaling and rotation isn't done very well in GIMP, unfortunately. In Photoshop, you'd be able to scale and rotate it in the one go. But this, you have to do one and then the other, which is a little bit annoying. And I might just move him on top of her. You might also want to reduce the opacity so you can see roughly how it is. But again, unfortunately, um, when I go to rotate it, it makes it so that it isn't opaque anymore, which is a little bit annoying. But that's what you work with. The reason why you'd want to do it in one go is because every time you rotate it or scale it, you're damaging that image. So you, um, by having to do this in three steps, because I've um, written at least two, um, I'm damaging that terminator more than I probably need to. I'll just cancel that one. Uh, I think that's roughly right. So again, I'll increase the opacity back up, and I'm going to add a layer mask. Add layer mask. Again, this time I'm going to still go with the black one and paint it, paint it back in, and add it. And then I'm going to use my airbrush tool on white and paint back where I want to see the ter parts of the Terminator. Didn't quite get the lining up right, but with a little bit more time and effort, you can see how I could make that look a little bit better. Anyway, that's the basics of using GIMP.